Hello and welcome to this episode of the AOA podcast. This is part of the Early Surgeon Best Practice series. My name is Aaron Brandt. I'm the current Emerging Leader Delegate for the AOA Executive Committee, and I've been tasked with organizing and pulling together the content for this series. In this episode, we're going to be discussing mentorship. And I know many of you are thinking, here we go again, another mentorship talk. And my first thought when I saw this on the list was just that. How am I going to make this different? But the fact is, mentorship is always going to be a big topic. And at this stage in our careers, it may be as big as ever. Not only are we looking for those mentors, those sponsors, those people to help us get to where we want to go, we're also transitioning to that role for those training below us or coming in behind us. So tonight, or whenever you're listening to this, I want to go off script a little bit and work away from this idea of best practice, because I'm not sure there is a best practice for how to develop these relationships, or at least I'm not the expert. But in my experience, the most impactful and meaningful relationships have developed from situations and interactions that I wouldn't have expected. With that, I want to welcome my guests for the discussion tonight, two people that have a long track record of mentorship and sponsorship for many, and who have been some of the biggest players in my life and career to date. Jim Fickey is department chair at Johns Hopkins and my current boss. And Joe Shu is trauma and deformity surgeon at Carolina's Medical Center and Atrium Health in Charlotte, where I did my training. Aside from the role each of them played for me separately, they also share a common history that started a long, long time before me. One thing I think you'll recognize from this discussion and these stories is that all of these relationships develop and grew despite challenges. None of them followed best practices, and they definitely took the road less traveled, if you will. I'm grateful to both of you for being willing to jump on and have this discussion tonight, and welcome. And just to give a heads up to everybody, I gave them no prep and no idea what we were going to talk about. (laughs) And for anybody who knows me, they know that that's pretty standard, so hopefully we have good editing, I guess. But I want to get started with you guys. I mean... Obviously, we we know each other, and I think one of the cool things about our, our paths is they weren't straight or they weren't all roses. And one of the my favorite stories or kind of what I, what I heard from you, Dr. Shu, is the beginning of your career with, with Dr. Fickey and, and kind of how that, how that went. I mean, I'd love for you guys just to kind of talk about the beginning of that relationship. Interesting. So before you call, you can call Jim a mentor. I think he's a grand mentor because Jim was one of my mentors. So I think by uh, whatever that relationship is. So not not to make you feel old, Jim. <laughs> is what it is. So I think uh, for me, the first time I really met Jim, and it really speaks to one of the things. If if you know if you had me describe Jim Fickey, I would tell you that he's a servant leader, and he's been a model for me for what servant leadership is about. And so he met he met me, or virtually met me, or heard about me because I was downrange. I was deployed in support of Operation Iraqi Freedom. I was at Ibn Sina Hospital in Baghdad, Iraq, myself and a guy named Glenn Kerr, who's now an arthroplasty surgeon just up the road here. And there was some command changes and some policy changes that occurred And while we were deployed, and we got caught in the middle of this. There were two young majors that are just doing our thing, and we were scheduled to come back mid-deployment to take our board exam, which was common and had been commonly done for years and years and years during the height of the war, really, because we were all getting deployed, regardless of war collection or, you know, just due to the op tempo at the time. So Glenn and I went downrange, and we were deployed, and this was summer of 2006, uh, sectarian violence, so it was a pretty busy time, and Jim had just taken over as the service leader for orthopedic surgery, the the consultant to the Surgeon General, so responsible for all things orthopedics. And here's these two majors that are making some noise and bag that Iraq that they need to get redeployed back for a couple weeks so they can sit for their boards and then then head on back. A lot lot of bad things were said about us. A lot of dialogue was created. And Jim stepped into the fray and got us back and did, did what needed to be done for our careers to progress. And we 
came back and I took my boards and two hours after I completed my board exam, I got on a flight and went back and did my duty. And so that was the first, the first I had met Jim Fickey, I had a big, big ask and he didn't really know me at all. And so that, but that was to me what servant leadership is about. Aaron, then I'm going to you know, jump in there and, and you say there's always two sides, two perspectives, you know, one is that I would say that leadership or mentorship are, you know, go hand in hand. And, and so, you know, in that context, and I love that Joe shared that story, because I think often about that now as a director on the board and sitting at the stage where, you know, we have to make uh, decisions. And for our audience, you know, for our people that think about boards, it's a daunting task. And just if you multiply that times about a thousand, uh, you're in conflict. You're, you know, you've got, you're seeing blown up people all the time. And Joe and I shared a couple of patients uh, over the course of that, that he took care of, kept alive. And then they came back to us in San Antonio. But subsequently, that was subsequent. The, the first time he was, you know, was, was really there in this first, this first mission. For me, as it was a it was just it was a no brainer. I would say that because, you know, we have people that are getting ready for boards. Uh, it's a lot of preparation. It's not a lot of understanding sometimes by leadership, and you know, to be able to defend and support, you know, a ne- a need is uh, you know was was a simple, straightforward thing with it. But the complexity of that was you had to get people out of a combat zone, and you had to get somebody else in there to take the mission. You know, so. What better than to ask Joe's boss to uh, you know, to deploy to go downrange and fill in for that? You know, is is always a uh, that was a seemingly clear thing to do. But I, you know, I I appreciate that. I would just say you know, that that story continues, Aaron, mm-hmm. because then it, you'd take us a couple years later, probably three years, maybe no, two years to to be clear. You know, I needed trauma surgeon. Now I was chief at, uh, at the Army Hospital down in Brook Army Medical Center, the really level one trauma center. And we were receiving people from Iraq from the time that Joe was there and I was there on to, you know, till it stopped. But I needed somebody to replace a retiring trauma surgeon. And um, Joe was, was the obvious choice because Joe was also a guy that would would throw himself onto a job and get it done. And I saw that with his dedication, his commitment there. But I also heard from others. And I think so the two messages I think about is pay attention because you never know, you know, when you're going to have an opportunity to help somebody and then the tables turn and they can help you. And, you know, the other part is that you listen to people around because there's a, you know, there, there was a advocate and I, I think Joe and I both, I have great reverence for John Holcomb and John was with uh, Joe downrange and John and I worked very closely in San Antonio and not always agreeable, but always uh, close. And, and John was saying, you got to get Joe here. And uh, you know, and so we were able to do that. And Joe and I spent countless Friday nights, hours in the hallway talking about how, you know, career development and, uh, trauma development and just life really. And I think, I think that we can go on, but I think you have some questions. So I would just say that that opportunity to help Joe enabled me to recruit him to come to Brook Army Medical Center and, uh, and to really create a, you know, a mutual dynamism that I think has helped generations of military or army surgeons learn about ortho and learn about ortho trauma and combat and service. I, I love it. I mean, it's, I mean, I've heard those stories from each of you separately. So hearing them together is nice. You both brought up just one of the, one of the biggest topics or points that I think is, is important for this is, is the things you're doing now matter and people are paying attention and they can lead to opportunities. They can, they lead to these relationships. So I know that we talk about mentorship and everyone's trying to find these things, but it can come from these types of situations and recognizing the people that you're dealing with that that's when it, that's when it works. And that's how it worked for, for me with both of these two uh, as well. And uh, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So that was, that was, that was great. I really like that kind of a segue. And Joe, you talk about kind of that, he brought up the kind of the sitting and just having chats and that those little moments and times where, where you have the opportunity to do so. What, what do you call those again? Yeah, the white space. yeah, yeah. So it's all, it's all the little moments in your day that you can fill with, you know, nowadays people get on social media or they do whatever or they, 
you know, scroll through ESPN. Um, but that white space, you can get a lot done. And so I've used that white space to get research done. I've used that white space to get, you know, just menial tasks done. But a lot of that white space is time. You know, some Jim, some of our best conversations were when we used to have to get bust in or run in two miles from the remote parking garage. And, you know, so we would come in at oh dark 30 in the morning. And so in the darkened hallway, before, you know, 30 minutes before checkout, you knew Jim would be there. And a lot of times, those were the times during the white space when there's nothing exactly happening that some of these impromptu discussions had. And you know, Jim will be kind because he'll say that they're all mentorship discussions, but some of them were arguments. I, I was, I was, I was difficult, but that was part, that was part of what I learned from Jim is how to not only manage, but lead and shape someone who has the material to move upward, but also that same material could be destructive for their career. Yeah, it's a powerful, just realizing that, so, you know, common themes that, you know, that I think are presence. We've suffered a lot during COVID and being so apart. And then we continue to suffer because we have, you know, we, we as orthopedic surgeons see people working from home and and uh, distance relationships, and we're doing this interview on Zoom, but, you know, we know each other, right? So you can't ever get to know somebody unless you have that white space, unless you have delays in your OR turnaround, or, you know, those, or the inefficiencies, or there are things that, you know, plague you and drive you crazy, but yet out of those come some good if you, if you look for it. One thing Joe commented on, you, you, uh, bent my ear a few times and I, you know, chewed on your ear a few times. And, you know, <laughs> what what comes of that is trust, right? And so presence, I think you you build trust, you build relationships, you know, and then what, what happens is when you get an opportunity to, you know, to be asked about, you know, about a job or something like that to advocate for somebody, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, you, I don't know if you want to talk about sponsorship, but I, I think mentorship and sponsorship are very connected. And so when, when I get asked about somebody that I've been had the privilege of being a mentor for, as it, you know, for instance, you know, I can say they took a lot of my time and there was a lot of energy expended <laughs> and I would hire them in a heartbeat. I think we're something quote, something very close to the quote that, you know, that was the, not a letter, but a phone call of recommendation. So those things happen because you trust each other you know, you're vulnerable and you're, both sides are vulnerable, you know, and, and that's, uh, and, and just letting yourself trust that somebody has your best interest at heart. So. Uh, Jim, you use the word vulnerable. It's actually something Aaron and I have talked about a lot. I, I think one of the challenges that people have in being mentors and, and a real challenge that people have just in leading others and near peers is this perception that you have to be this you know, bright, shining object and this, you know, everything is smooth and everything goes well. And, and that's how, you know, and you're this beacon for people to aspire towards. And and I feel the opposite. I think, you know, I, like you, I share honestly about, you know, what, what I call gaps in the armor. It's, it's, you know, people, people look at my career and they're saying, oh, wow, look, you've done all these things, right. You did this and then the other. And I tell people it was, you know, a series of different things that occurred. Very few of them were in my control. I said, and let me tell you where I really made mistakes and, and some of the challenges. I already alluded to the same fire and, and energy that propelled me is also the same type of fire and energy that can get you into trouble. And and I'm very honest with people like about it. I've been honest with Aaron about that as well. And it took people like you and, and others and in, in, in my life to really help me channel that energy and get it in the right direction. And it's not that you're weak, you know, and then I'll, I'll now throw in one of my other favorites is Bruce Lee's quote about being like water. Water's not weak. It, it can flow. And there's times that it needs to flow and there's times that it should crash. And uh, And I learned a lot of that by managing some of this stuff, you know, we have fancy words for it now, EQ and all this stuff for it now. But um, a lot of that was just the honest type of leadership and mentorship that you showed. You were, you were open with what your gaps in the armor were. And it showed me that, look, to really be this kind of leader, when young Aaron comes around, I've got to say, look, 
these are the following places where I've messed up. And a lot of the indirect relationship with you is telling you, this is how I used to drive Jim Pickey crazy. And I'll just tell Aaron all these things. <laughs> he did. He did. He really did. Uh, well, that's, that's so ironic, you know, because Aaron, our relationship now is, uh, you know, is, is founded on a lot of connection through Joe and, uh, you know, and I don't know if we're, you know, social media actually, right. We, yeah, uh, we yeah. that way, but, uh, you know, but we started to talk long before we were really thinking about, you know, job you now with it. But, you know, I think that's true. I think as mentors for the group that's listening, as young career, realize that the mentor isn't that iconic iconic person. They are basically putting their shoes on one at a time and tying them. And uh, sometimes the shoes get untied. And, you know, sometimes, you know, for charts you know records medical records is a bane of an existence of a chair but only because i know that i'm only half a step ahead if i'm if i'm that and so you know realizing that a mentor has the same challenges about or availability or about you know it, it just change interchange some situations but but that i think is um you know is is important for young career physicians and young career surgeons to to recognize that you, the, your mentor's human too. And I, and then as mentors, we have, we have to be willing to share that. So yeah, thanks, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, one thing in the, at this stage that's just really challenging is that transition. We go from the mentor or, or mentee or spawn, like being, being mentored, if you will, and having to also think about that from the other end. So I, I, I like the kind of conversations about the being present. I think that you don't use that white space if you aren't calm, because uh, you can just keep running and, and there's always another task. But the other piece is just to your point, being able to see those those little moments and and uh, faults. I guess that was a that was a huge thing for me going through residency, as Joe can attest to. I had some some nice lows through the process and really what turned things around was really looking for those things and not, not to be like, a, not that I was going to use them against people, but I, I started looking for them. I wanted to see people who that were, who were honest and authentic and coming through and outside of our jobs were, were, were people. And so once I started doing that, I tell residents and I tell people all the time, like, that's, that's what I'm looking for. That's what you should be looking for. That's how you're going to start developing these relationships. As you go through this process, you're going to see the people that you want to be and who you can actually connect with. Because me and Joe, me and Joe did not start out where we're at now, and it was not anything. But I just didn't see anything, any of those those flaws initially. He was he was a great teacher and and coach, and he was definitely a person that kind of influenced my training the most through the early years. But it but it took some time to develop this this relationship, and it was because we didn't bridge that gap and took leaving the country to to kind of get there, but. And a lot of effort from from you, Joe, and I appreciate it for that for sticking with me because I'm not the easiest to get through to. So, so Aaron, what you le you left the country? Did you guys go international or something? What's we the did? Yeah, no, um, yeah. Our my fourth year, I went to Honduras with him for our, the restore the the uh, limb reconstruction mission, and it was just us two, and it was it was, it was great, but. We had one fateful morning where we were at breakfast, and uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he said something, and apparently I just like was was very confident that morning, but it, it set me off, and I raised my voice, and we we uh, had had a moment that we kind of very, both of us got on the same page a little bit, but it was it was great. I think that the trip to Honduras, and it's one of the reasons why I continue to do acute trauma as well. It's a substrate. It's a substrate for human development. And the thing that um, the thing that Honduras, um, the nice thing about it, it was a mission. It was very pure. And, and when I say mission, I don't mean a mission like we're going to go somewhere. I mean mission from the sense of you, you knew why you were there. You knew what you were there. You, you knew what the purpose was. You were making a difference. And I felt the same thing about the war. Uh, you know, and and Jim can tell you some of the pro some of the problems I had is I was always on mission. <laughs> And when you have that substrate where you see the mission is the same and the same thing, you know, Aaron, you and I served together during COVID, during the isolation teams and everything. Th those are really bonding experience because you are raw. Your true self comes out. And so my advice to people, too, 
is you, you say, well, I, you know, what if there's not a pandemic? What if I'm not going to go to Honduras? What if I'm not going to go to war? There are other ways where you can show these gaps in the armor. And, and you know, what I tell people, my, my superpower when it comes to mentorship and connecting with, with mentees is my wife. Mm-hmm. We've been married 23 years. She is far and away the alpha. And y'all both know her. Y'all both smiling because y'all know it's true. So I like to invite people to my home for a variety of different things. And what they see is they see who the real alpha is. And that changes everything. It changes the perspective from everyone when they, when they meet my wife. And, uh, and so I think that that is a really concrete example, something that, you know, a lot of people can use if they have, if they're fortunate enough to have someone like that in their life. But there are other things that other people use sports or different things that they'll do to kind of let those guards down. And then before I shut up, the last thing I'll say is that it's not over, right? I mean, I'm still, I still reach out to Jim for advice. I'm, you know, I'm working with an executive coach. I have multiple mentors as well within our health system that are even outside of orthopedics that are in different levels of leadership. And so it's never really over until you say, look, I'm, I'm done growing. If you're going to have a growth mindset, it's not over. Yeah, ever. You know, that's that's a really good point, Joe. As a marker of that, the AAOS meeting is just, you know, is 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 a place where we of all different specialties come together. And so I look forward to, you know, I get I I, I get to have breakfast with, you know, Dan Stinner or Chad Kruger or Joe or, you know, that the people that or, you know, people that have mentored me, you know. I I enjoy Mark Swinkowski is a is a great example. You know, I'm here because uh, people like Mark Swinkowski and, you know, Ellen McKenzie and, you know, those, those things, and you look for that. So there's this, I, I'm not sure how to process the grandfather mentor, grand mentor concept, because <laughs> that's going to put, uh, you know, Mark is a great grand, but he, great three generations of it, yeah. you know, but I, I do think it's a lifelong thing, you know, is, is you don't, you don't ever stop learning. Hopefully you don't. I mean, I, I, I don't expect to now, but I, I, I continue to, you know, see, you know, you get a lot of joy, uh, you know, watching you, Joe, if, if come up, uh, you know, watching Dan Stinner um, pin on his Colonel, you know, flying out to Vanderbilt for, uh, for that. Those are things that, you know, I think we all get, we both, both sides of the relationship get a, uh, you know, get a, uh, sorry about the text there, but so both sides get a, um, a meaning, a gratification, and a, a fulfillment from uh, from the relationship. Mentorship, I think, is a, a nice word just to talk about uh, coaching and those, those moments that you, that you have. And a true mentor is is a rare thing, the one that kind of lingers, and it's that that really does become a reciprocal relationship. In all honesty, there has to be some give and take. You have to be able to see each other, but mentoring is constant and i think that that's something that's interesting there's there you know people mentoring you at different stages all the time so take advantage of it listen to a podcast like do do what you need to do but i i think the anxiety of trying to find that and to find that sponsorship i i like that you brought up sponsorship because i think that's one thing that's that's always mixed in this conversation that we that that confuses everything sponsors are huge but they don't have to be or aren't mentors and and so just making sure you're looking for those things and looking for those moments because they're going to hit you and you may just miss it. Yeah. If you, you know, what is the difference? You know, I, I would say that, uh, you know, in a way, per, perhaps the, you know, my ability from a position of influence as the, especially leader for Joe, the first, our first engagement that, that you brought up, Joe is, you know, was, was, a bit of a sponsorship is to say by my position, I was able to influence positively your, your outcome, you know, your, right. your position. So it isn't always a job, you know, it could be an opportunity. It could be a, you know, I, I will share this. I, you know, I was had the privilege of running EW, the extremity war injuries for a lot of years. And I think it put me career wise on the map. And that resulted from one phone call from a guy named Andy Pollack, who I hardly knew. You know, and he called and said, "Need to have uh, need to have a military guy." So uh, I, I was the token military guy, and at the right place at the right time. But but that kind of thing happens. And you brought this up, Aaron. So I think that saying yes 
is something we talk about. You know, career wise, we don't know when to say yes. We say we have a tendency to say yes to everything. And, um, you know, and, and realizing that there are moments that are historic moments in your career always is retrospective, you know, and you don't always know when you're in, at that moment to, to say it. So I think it's good to have a sounding board and that could be a mentor. It could be a partner, you know, it could be, a, you know, life partner too, but, but having uh, someone to really bounce off, Hey, is this a good idea? Then it kind of goes back to, going to a job or going to a new assignment or going to a new opportunity or just making a decision about a career change, you know, things like that. And I wouldn't mind throwing out a couple of different practical things around sponsorship as well. Cause the, for those people that are mid career and higher, there's real opportunities that kind of come and go, right? I mean, it's one thing to write a letter of recommendation for someone. It's another thing to pick up a phone call pick up and and make a phone call to a program director and say, look, I, I just want you to really understand you know, this this individual or to sit someone next to someone else at a sushi restaurant so they can have a little chit chat, even though you're the one who wants to sit next to them. Yeah, you guys did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I can tell you something that happens a lot to all of us. You get asked to give a talk. You get asked to be on a panel. And, you know, for me, I'll look and say, who who do I know that's early in their career that could be on this panel instead of me? And uh, and a lot of times I'll reply back and I'd say, hey, you know, did you consider this person? And uh, and I'll I'll suggest a, a different person. And I'm and I'm honored to I'm honored at the invitation. And, you know, maybe I do have something unique to contribute. But if it's someone that you've mentored well enough, then now you can sponsor them and know that they're going to be great and take a step down from that. And we have, we all have those opportunities all the time. And even in some of the work that we do in our own facilities, when they're putting together a task force or a committee that, you know, there's opportunities to sponsor someone um, in your group to do those things. I guess that's the one thing with the kind of early career aspect of that is, is, some of those things and saying yes is, is obviously important, but some of this is also kind of being true to yourself a little bit because that's what's going to, people are going to notice and we keep alluding to it. But the reason I, I work at Hopkins now and, and is partially related to this and it truly was one of those times I was at the AOA conference, which is how I got latched on and uh, uh, invested in the in the program as, as a whole and went to dinner with you guys. I remember you bringing up the job potentially after our dinner and our conversations. And I like thought you were joking. And then two years later, dropped into my DMs on Spotify and uh, asked if I had a job lined up. And, and here we are. And I think that that's it was, it was actually a very incredible process, but it very much came down to just uh, you, you two knowing each other and and our conversation and, and having that that history. And so. I think the opportunities are going to come whether you want them or not. And it's just who, who, how do you want to be identified and how do you want to be known? Because what the, your story of you two, it doesn't sound like Joe, you were looking for Jim. It sounds like Jim identified you and saw how you handled things in that moment and saw some value there too. And same, same with me and you, it just seemed like that was kind of the, the difference is you, you valued me and invested in me. And I, and then I, I saw that and that, and it, changed and the, and the relationship changed. So I think we can chase these relationships or, or we can kind of just be aware uh, when they're coming because it can be pretty out of, out of the blue or uh, kind of random, if you will. Be attentive, yeah. you know, yeah, attentive. really trying to, and then seek, you know, if, yeah, I, I, I think that's really, that's kind of that, that re, being receptive, listening and, and looking for, you know, for the, cues it's not they're not sometimes they're subtle and sometimes they're just you know reach out and say hey you got a job yet kind of thing or hey you know what where uh where are you going after el paso texas you know <laughs> <laughs> I, um, i'm in el paso <laughs> i think from uh i hopefully this has been valuable i think that some of this is i mean we could go on and on and on and and i wanted to kind of make some of the points you guys did it for me do either of you have any kind of tips for people at early stage, what they need to do? I, I love your, your point of like making decisions like in the, at this stage, like you need to be able to ask, ask people and, 
and know when the right time to say yes is. Do you have any advice on kind of finding mentorship, sponsorship at this stage? Well, I think we've said it throughout the you know the dialogue here or trialogue, whatever the conversation. But it has been you know it's being receptive, slowing down when you you know and listening is you know is is the is the piece. And and I think I'm, I'm going to boomerang this back a little bit. You know, um, understanding that as you're walking into a new position, Aaron, you asked, you you made an an overt ask, and we put it into your your contract Mm -hmm. to meet, you know, um, and, and that is something that I think a new, new faculty, a new position, new out of fellowship people, or you're looking in different jobs is say, I I want to have a regular meeting. And that becomes, uh, it's not just the official meeting, but it's a, you know, a coffee chat or something like that. And so don't be reluctant to ask people, and then as on the other side is be realize that, you know, you've got 24 hours, you know, I've got a little list of card, a card of a list. And one of those is everybody has 24 hours. You don't have more and you're going to decide what you use those for. So don't over, over commit. I like so that. Mentor. That's yeah. it. I think uh, the things I would say for someone young and early career is I already mentioned it a little bit is mentorship is complex and you can have multiple mentors and there are people again that, you know, there are some sayings that you walk with two people, one is wiser, one is not, they're both your teacher. And so sometimes you you'll have a failed attempt at a relationship and that's okay. You can learn from that. And rather than say that was a waste of my time, what did you learn from that? And what what were the shortcomings either that you had and that weren't ready for that relationship or that that attempted potential mentee on the other or mentor on the other side didn't have? And then we need multiple channel inputs. And so I have a lot of different mentors to help with different aspects where I feel like I need growth. And a lot of times, and Jim can tell you, is that, you know, I don't reach out every, you know, every every month even you know, we see each other, we connect, and it's just like it was the same as yesterday. But there's 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 usually a couple things where I'll reach out to Jim about very, very specifically before I made some big decisions in my career as well. And then I think the other thing as a mentee or someone seeking this relationship, and you already talked a little bit about being open and, and doing the work, is it is going to be uncomfortable. If you're not, if you don't want to be uncomfortable, then don't seek a mentor, right? I mean, Aaron, you already alluded to the fact that some of the stuff that glued us together was extremely uncomfortable. And you've got to be willing to do the work and to look inside. And the people that I respect are the people who had the patience to stick with me, even when you are struggling through your own stuff, your own blind spots, your own baggage. And as you're struggling through that stuff, they stick with you through that so that you can work through it and they'll help you work through it. But some of the helping you work through it is to tell you, this is your problem yeah. in, in kinder words, but that's yeah. essentially, or that's or essentially not. what it has to be. Well, or not. Yeah. Or not. I mean, okay, like that's that's, bigger, it depends on who you're dealing with. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's the key. Like that's, that's the perfect segue is that that authenticity was, is huge. And I'm going to give credit to Eric Seacris for throwing that in my head. Cause I use it all the time vulnerability, no one likes to hear, but I just say, be authentic because I need to hear that type of stuff and relatively bluntly. And that's where I latched onto you just for feedback and everything, because you gave it very direct, very to the point and productive. And so I was like, I'm in for that. And then I can, I can respond to that. And so I think that that's kind of the point here we've kind of made throughout this is that there's, there's an element of vulnerability, which we're going to start calling authenticity that can help <laughs> with all of these stages as a mentor mentee either way. And, and and I think that's the, that's the value of this. So that's, that's why I wanted to put this group together. That was very easy to get us to talk about that. So that was nice, but from a close, I just want to thank you guys for, for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. Pleasure. Thanks. Yeah. Honored.